On a quiet, breezy afternoon in the suburban town of Pinebrook, Kansas, Aiden Collins stood outside his house sipping a cup of coffee. It was the kind of town where people knew each other and nothing much ever seemed to happen. That was until a single moment shattered the peaceful calm of the day and set off a heart-stopping chain of events. Across the street, Aiden noticed a young girl, about six years old, riding her bright pink bicycle. The wheels spun happily as she pedaled down the street, her small frame slightly wobbling as she tried to maintain balance. Aiden didn't know her personally, but she looked like a child from the neighborhood, likely out for a bit of fun before dinner. Her pigtails bounced in the air, and a stream of laughter left her lips as she turned a corner. Everything seemed perfectly normal, but within seconds, that peace was shattered. Suddenly, a dark red car, a Dodge Challenger, sped down the street much too fast for a quiet neighborhood like Pinebrook. Aiden squinted, trying to make sense of the scene, but before he could fully process what was happening, the car pulled over beside the girl. The door swung open aggressively, and a tall, burly man leapt out. In a flash, he grabbed the young girl, yanking her from her bike. Her scream pierced the air, shattering the normalcy of the afternoon. Aiden's heart dropped. He stood frozen for just a split second, the disbelief rooting him to the spot, but instinct kicked in fast. Hey, he shouted, sprinting toward the scene. But it was too late. The man had already thrown the girl into the back seat of the car. The driver slammed the door, and in a cloud of dust, the red Challenger peeled away. The girl's abandoned bike clattered to the ground, spinning in place as if it were as confused as Aiden was. Without wasting another second, Aiden bolted to his own car, a silver Honda Civic, parked just outside his driveway. His hands fumbled with the keys, adrenaline making his heart pound loudly in his chest. Once inside, he sped off in pursuit, tires screeching against the pavement. The Dodge Challenger was fast, much faster than his own car, but Aiden wasn't about to let that stop him. As the car roared down the road, Aiden focused, narrowing his vision to the back of the Dodge. He wasn't going to catch up, that much was clear, but his mind was racing just as fast as his car. He squinted, catching sight of the Challenger's license plate. 7F9, he whispered aloud to himself, repeating the digits over and over so he wouldn't forget. He took note of every detail he could, the cracked taillight on the left side, the dent near the rear bumper. He had no time to think, only act. Realizing he wouldn't be able to close the gap, Aiden reached for his phone and quickly dialed 911, trying to keep his voice steady despite the panic clawing at him. 911, what's your emergency? The operator's calm voice felt almost jarring. A little girl, she's just been kidnapped. Aiden's voice trembled as he relayed every piece of information he could. The color of the car, the plate number, the direction they were heading. Every second mattered. Stay with me, sir. We've got units on the way. Stay at a safe distance if you're pursuing them and don't engage. Aiden kept his distance but stayed close enough to track the car. It seemed to weave recklessly in and out of traffic, heading toward the outskirts of Pinebrook where the town's small boundaries gave way to rural roads and open farmland. The Dodge was trying to escape, but Aiden, who had grown up in this town, knew these roads well. He could already guess where the kidnapper might be headed. Officer Sarah Hudson was in the middle of her shift at the Pine Brook Police Station when the call came through. The report of an abduction spread like wildfire, jolting the usually quiet dispatch center into action. The description of the Red Challenger went out to all available patrols, and Sarah's heart raced. She was one of the closest units to the area. Dispatch, this is Officer Hudson. I'm en route, she said into her radio, flicking on the sirens and speeding down the town's main avenue. She radioed back up and began her pursuit, taking a route that would intercept the vehicle. As she neared the outskirts, she spotted a silver Honda Civic trailing behind the red car. It had to be Aiden, the civilian who made the call. Sarah knew she had to act fast before the Dodge disappeared into the rural roads, where help would take longer to reach them. Aiden's palms were slick with sweat, his grip on the steering wheel tightening as he followed the Dodge Challenger down a narrow country road. The farther they went, the more isolated they became. The familiar sight of barns and open fields whizzed by in a blur, but Aiden's mind stayed laser focused. Just ahead, he saw a turnoff that led into an old abandoned factory, a place locals knew but rarely visited. 
Without warning, the Challenger veered off the road and headed straight toward the factory. Aiden followed only to see flashing lights in his rearview mirror. Officer Hudson's patrol car caught up, speeding past him to take the lead. The police car's sirens wailed as Hudson positioned herself behind the Dodge, pushing it closer to the factory's fence. There was no escape now. The driver later identified as Marvin Cole, a 42-year-old man with a long history of petty crimes, slammed on the brakes. Before he could react, Hudson was already out of her car, weapon drawn. She approached cautiously, keeping her distance as backup arrived. Step out of the vehicle, she commanded. Cole hesitated but ultimately knew he was cornered. Slowly, he opened the door, hands raised in surrender. Two officers quickly moved in, cuffing him as Hudson rushed to the back seat. The little girl, still trembling and teary-eyed, was curled up, clutching a small stuffed toy. She was frightened but physically unharmed. Aiden, watching from a distance, felt a wave of relief wash over him. The nightmare was over. Later that evening, as the sun set over Pinebrook, the girl was safely reunited with her family. Her parents, overwhelmed with emotion, couldn't stop thanking Aiden for his quick thinking and bravery. Aiden Collins, once just a man enjoying his afternoon coffee, had become a local hero. And as the town buzzed with the news of the dramatic rescue, Aiden reflected on how one ordinary day had turned into a life-changing event, reminding him and everyone else that even in the most unexpected moments, one person's courage can make all the difference.